sexual violence in conflict is something that is as old as time and sadly has been accepted as inevitable. We think that is absolutely not the case. Sexual violence in conflict could and should be eradicated. We believe powerfully that the British government is in a unique position to be able to do that. We have here in the United Kingdom a, a very stable society of many different backgrounds and ethnic minorities and we think that the United Kingdom is absolutely the right country to lead on this. That was of course uh, reinforced by the outstandingly powerful launch of the Prevention of Sexual Violence in Conflict Initiative by the former Secretary of State William Hague, now a peer, and by the unique conference that was held in 2014. Our report says clearly that was fantastic, but what next? We have to reinforce that message and we ask our government to lead on this as we have already done so and to gather in uh, like-minded nations, intergovernmental institutions, to put more pressure, for example, on the incoming Secretary General of the United Nations, particularly on peacekeeping crimes of sexual violence in conflict, and also to work with NGOs and most of all with local populations. We know that Britain can do this. We've led from the front about a year and a half ago, now we have to follow that up very powerfully indeed. Our committee praised the government for launching the initiative of the Provincial of Sexual Violence in Conflict and for the excellent international conference that followed subsequently. But we felt strongly that the momentum has flagged dramatically and our demand, it's not just a wish, it's more than a wish, is that the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, leading as it does on this, should bring this right up on the agenda. This crime is as bad as slavery, it's as bad as piracy, and it's as bad as torture. It is in fact a war crime. We should be aiming as a nation to eliminate it, not just to soften it, not just to be helpful, not just to make remarks, but to do something that will wipe it out forever. We saw a number of practical possibilities. We interviewed some of the victims, a devastating experience, and we could tell what needed to be done. And for example, we've proposed that the government strengthens our input into the prosecuting office of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Uh, we've suggested strongly uh, that the new government, the new Secretary General of the United Nations uh, should be committed, asked to be committed by our government and pressed to the wiping out of sexual violence, especially by peacekeepers who frequently assault the victims that they're meant to be protecting. Uh, we've suggested that education on the ground in some of the 19 countries where sexual violence is being practiced in conflict at this time as we speak, education of the local population, particularly secondary school and tertiary education, particularly aimed at young men but not only young men, yeah, that seems to have a great impact in softening the impact of sexual violence and its incidence in conflict. So there are a number of practical things, and they're all based on the view that the government, if it means business on the prevention of sexual violence in conflict, must make a strategic plan, must publish the strategic plan, and must uh, create a very detailed timetable that we in Parliament, in the House of Lords particularly, can follow up and can support.